Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome again to our week of prayer. And we are so glad to have you. So tonight we are starting off and it promises to be another night of blessing. And with me here is Matthias Volanen. Welcome, Matthias. How are you? Hi. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, John. Yeah. And I will tell you ma about Matthias. He is the head of the media team here in Freensau University. He has a lot to contribute to this program, and they have done a very wonderful job. So, Matthias, how hard and how easy was it for you and your team to put all these things together? <laughs> yeah, it's actually a big challenge, yeah? When you make an event like this, when you combine the event which is happening here mm -hmm. in Friedensau, in Germany, with the online streaming, that's a challenge. But we have been facing that since a year already with the COVID, the with pandemic. The COVID. That was like a challenge for all of us and for the media department out. But I consider that like as a ministry wow. because through that channels like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, we can spread out the message, That's the true. message that Jesus loves us, that he has a plan for us and that he's coming back soon. I consider that a really big ministry. So without your input, it will be difficult to even interact with our online audience, isn't it? Yeah, so right. we want to say a big thanks to Matthias and to all the guys. But I have to tell you, John, <laughs> yes. this work, this is a huge work a huge behind work, the right. scenes. Yeah? And actually, I don't do it alone, of course. There is a big team involved always in the back, behind the scenes, here in the cameras, out there in the rooms. And we are about here, about 10 persons working wow. really hard since already a week to prepare lights, cameras, everything here in the chapel that everybody, not only here in the room, but those who are also over watching overseas. You know, you know, last night we had many from Nigeria. Really? You know, wow. many from Europe and other parts of the world. We had about 285 viewers wow, that's you know, massive. joining and right. that's massive yeah. and tonight we hope we have more yes and that's what <laughs> keep us going and yeah. keep us making this content because i really do believe that through the media we can do a good job and we can also reach people which are not here but they can also feel part of us and you which are watching us at that moment you are part of this event that's true that i also wanted to extend this invitation not for for you which is watching us right now live maybe which will watch later to join to share with your friends because this work here is also like make us our heart here really warm that we are in community not only here in Frenzo, but all over the world. All over the world. And by the way, um, we're saying hi to all those who are joining. We have Philip, who is joining from Marburg, and we have uh, Micah, who is joining. We have Albi, and we know many others will join tonight. So, Matthias, what's your expectation for this week? You know, I'm very excited, not only because it's a week of prayer, not mm -hmm. only because it's one of the opportunities that we have after this pandemic time to meet all again and to celebrate, to worship together. That's amazing. But I'm also very happy because uh, the speaker of this week that is here behind he's here, me he'll, he's he'll, also a very good friend. <laughs> he's also coming from my country. He's oh. also Brazilian. And I'm really happy to share this moment with him and with everybody which is here in the chapel with you with the whole team in the back here we have also a lot of nationalities here in yeah. France and that's beautiful yeah. you can learn you can share experiences and that makes even more great our and experiences we would like to even invite you you know to think about Frenzau Frenzau is an international community where we live as one and we love each other here. Thank you so much, Matthias, for coming. Yeah, and uh, I wish you a very successful um, week as you handle the media yes. for this program. By the way, I have to run now because Thank we you. have the last yeah, minute people, people preparation. Are, people are coming people already. Are coming already. I see already some movement down there. we hope that those who are joining right. would join because very soon it will be time to hear the word of God. Yes. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much, Matthias. <laughs> yes. And I want to also invite you to join us because the next person you're going to have here on stage will be the speaker, Paulo Steiner. And he has a word for you tonight. Paulo, please come up. Yeah, hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. John. Good, good to evening, see you. Everyone there watching us. <laughs> yeah, how was the day? My day was fine. And yours? Yeah, it was cool. You must have been stressed from preaching last night, right? Yeah, that is, that is, it's just one hour, but it's really. Well, you can get tired of it. Well, like, so, at the end. so what was your experience the, the first night? What was it like? Yeah, so, um, uh, dear viewer, we want to encourage you to keep joining every day. 
every night. And don't forget to tell us where you're joining us from. Very important. And we'll give you more details as we proceed. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Are you experiencing some technical <laughs> it difficulties? Happens. It happens. <laughs> what was your question again? Yeah. I mean, the first night of preaching, what was it like? How did you feel? It was, it was interesting. The first night is always the one when you're most anxious because you don't know the people. But as you go through the week, you get to know them better. And they get to know the message as well and know where you're going. Yeah. But now we're past that. And I'm super excited about tonight and the message and the following messages as well. I hope people like it as well. You know, when you talked about how man was lost and how God came in search of man, it's, it's made a whole sense to me because that was our condition. So you, you believe that God is really in search of man. Yeah, I do. That's, uh, well, if you look at the Bible from the beginning to the end, it's always the story of how God is running after mankind. Mankind mm. is trying to hide. Mankind is trying to go places where it shouldn't go. And God is always there trying to intervene, trying to create this convergence, right? That's a title, convergence. Mm. Trying to create this convergence and bring us back to him because he loves us so desperately. So it's all about God in seeking mankind and wow. searching out wherever we are to bring us back to him. So you mean we can never get to a point where God cannot reach us, right? No, I, I don't believe that. I mean, we can still make the choice because we, ha we have free will, right? Yeah. We can recuse, we, we, we can yeah, like refuse his invitation, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter that he's not, it doesn't mean that he's not going to reach out to us. He's always reaching wow. out. And that's the wonderful story of the Bible. That's great. And as we go on, I just want to say hi to Chinyere Ihayuchuku from Nigeria. I know that name. Oh, that's cool. Agape Okebiri from Nigeria. So they are here. Mm, They're joining a lot tonight. Of people from there. So it's all <laughs> over the world. So, so a all big hello to Nigeria and yeah. all of you who were watching you know, us. I come from Nigeria. Oh. And I can tell you how we say good evening in my local language. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to listen it. You can say Anyasyoma. Say Anyasyoma. Anyasyoma. That's good <laughs> evening. So that's was it from, close? <laughs> it means good evening. Oh, okay. Anyasyoma. That was close. Cool. Yeah. That was close. Mm. So tell us about your growing up. How did, you, how did you discover that God was calling you to be a minister? Um, yeah, I grew up in an Adventist home. So my parents were Adventists and I was educated like I grew up in an Adventist home since kid. I, I studied in Adventist schools, but actually, I, I have to say that I only had this confirmation of the calling to pastoral ministry when I was already studying theology. And it was something very clear to me that that's the path God wanted me to follow. But first I had to get there and start studying. <laughs> and then I got like this calling, you know, this, this yeah. feeling that, yes, this is the right this place for me. This is what God wants you to do. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. So along your ministry, you must have had this Bible text that has kept you going. Last night you talked about one. Mm -hmm. You have another tonight? If I had a Bible text, I would... Think about like, Paul's uh, ad advice, Paul's counsel to Timothy, where he says, preach the word, be it time, be it in time or outside of time, or be, wow. be not the time. Just preach the word, and it's going to bring it, the results, right? Wow. So I think this is what kept me motivated. Great. So, Paul, we are going to start very soon, and we still want to say hi to all those who are joining, Benjamin. Uh, perhaps from, I don't know where, he didn't tell us where he's joining from. Ditma is also saying hi to us. But then for those who join us, we have a gift, a kind of reward oh, at the end cool. of the program. Would you want to show us what it is or do we leave it till the day? I think we show them, right? <laughs> we show them, right? <laughs> yeah, I or, mean. Or we, we, just, we just raise the bag up, but we don't show them what's inside the bag. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. So the point is every evening as you join, please do well to tell us where you're joining from. You know, just go to Instagram and just write us hashtag FAU Praise For You and that will be enough. Tell us where and you're joining from. And then you may from. get this bag at the end. At the end, it will come to your doorstep, by the way. <laughs> so that's it tonight. We are very happy and we are excited to begin another time with the Lord. And very soon you would hear Paulo Steiner preach the word of God. See you there.
A very warm welcome to you. Can you all see me? Those who are here in the chapel, wave to me. Hi. Okay, perfect. Those online, can you see me? Type yes in the comments if you see me. <laughs> perfect. Can you hear me all good? What? Okay, now I can hear you too. Perfect. Um, my name is Ietje. I'm glad to be here with you today. I study theology here in Friedensau, and we're here together to join the week of prayer. And before we begin, I'd like you to have a quick warm-up. So I'd like you all to stand up. You have to all have to stand up. All, those in the back too, I can see you. Yeah, I can see you too. Perfect, stand up. Okay, and now I'll, I'll do a quick question round. So, who slept well today? You can sit down. Okay, that is <laughs> not that many. Um, who is wearing glasses today? Sit down. Okay, yeah, it was the question today. Are you wearing glasses today? Okay, perfect. I see some people standing. Okay, um, who enjoyed the sermon yesterday? You can sit down. <laughs> and who is here for the first time today? Whee! <laughs> perfect, you can sit down too. Um, just a quick question. Raise your hand if you used the hashtag Friedensau, F-A-U, praise. Raise your hand. Oh, nobody. Okay, let me introduce you to um, F-A-U, praise. Hashtag F-A-U, praise. As you know, hashtags are modern day thing, you know. Um, hashtags are used on social media, like Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Like, hashtags, you can use hashtags wherever you want. So, if you want to post a story on Instagram, a story on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever you want, if you want to post something, use the hashtag FAU Praise for FAU, Friends of Adventist University, Week of Prayer. Um, there's a gain for you, actually, because at the end of this week, on Friday, there is a giveaway for you. There is a gift, there is a present, there is, you can win something if you use this hashtag. Um, and if you use the hashtag on any post, um, story, whatever, you enter the giveaway automatically. Got that? Did you, did you all hear that? Yes? No? Yeah? Okay, okay, let me, let me see a show of hands. Who all uses Instagram? Who uses Instagram? Okay, perfect, this message was for you. Who uses Facebook? <laughs> Who uses Facebook? Okay, <laughs> who uses Twitter? Okay, perfect, go all on Instagram and um, get the hashtag <laughs> and enter our giveaway, thank you. Um, for today, we would like to begin our week of prayer with songs, with praise, and we wanna sing together, and I invite the band up today because um, we like to sing and have a good day. to stand up when we worship our God and please put your mask over your mouth first song in German and it's about that only a slightly touch of Jesus robe is enough to bring change for our lives and we want to say Jesus here we are please come and touch our hearts okay stand up Gegenwart, 
into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you I got a straighter I got a stronger got you higher than any other I got a sweeter and some empowered Amazing God, He's the greatest and strongest and highest King above all kings. But Philippians 2, verses 6 to 8 says, Who being in the front of God, through it not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation and took upon Him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But because of the death of Jesus at the cross and his victory above sin and shame, we can sing, boldly I approach your throne. And we sing the song in German, Mutig komm ich vor dein Thron.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful evening that you give us. Thank you, God, that we are allowed to come boldly before your throne and dump everything that oppresses us before you. Please open our ears and let us hear your voice when you are speaking to us through Paulo. So bless us tonight and be with us. Amen. It's me again. It's not Paolo. Sorry. Um, you remember how I did the warm-up, right? Yes. Thank you. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Damn. Um, so now I'd like to stand, um, I'd like all men and those who identify as men, to stand up, please. All, all men, all, all men that are here. Oh, okay. Okay, nice. Hi. Glad you're here. Okay, um, I need a man. I'm looking for a man with um, dark hair. So everyone with like light and blonde hair, sit back down again. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, so I'm looking for a guy who can speak uh, Portuguese. Okay, nice. Uh, Paulo, come up here. <laughs> I found you. I'm glad you're here. Um, and for this interview, I'd like to do something different, okay? okay. So I'm going to ask you <laughs> this or that questions. Mm -hmm. You familiar with those questions? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Let me begin. Cats or dogs? Dogs, definitely. Okay, time to go. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, reading or listening to an audiobook? Reading. Okay, glass half full or half empty? 
Heffel. Okay, perfect. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Okay. Um, most of the time. Most. Dinner with Paul or dinner with Moses? Mm, hard one. With Moses, I'd say, because we're going to talk about him tonight. Oh, uh, good, good to know, <laughs> good to know. Um, this is a really hard question. You don't have to answer it, but I found it really interesting. Um, betray Jesus or deny Jesus? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'd say deny Jesus okay. somehow betraying We him. got that on camera, you know. Okay. <laughs> um, would you rather know what type of fruit Adam and Eve ate in the garden, or would you rather know um, what Jesus wrote in the sand with the women? The fruit, definitely. The fruit? Yeah. Okay, okay, interesting. <laughs> um, would you rather have heard one of Jesus' sermons or seen one of his miracles? Sermon. Ser okay, interesting. Um, if you go on vacation, mountains or sea? Both. <laughs> mountains okay, and sea. Okay, sea, sea. I, I come from Brazil. We have no mountains there and a lot of beach, so <laughs> Okay, <sea. laughs> okay, so sea. Um, I thought actually that you answer mountains because today's topic is up in the mountains, but right. anyway. <laughs> Sorry to spoil no, it for no, you. No, 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 it's okay. Um, so you know Paolo a little bit better now. He's a, he's a dog person, so all cat persons, I'm sorry. I'm, I understand I like you. cats too, but I have a dog, so oh, I hope okay. she's not listening, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can say hi to her. Hi. Hi, Peppa. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, I'm glad we know you better now, and God's blessing for your sermon, and open your ears, open your hearts, and be here. Thank, Thank you. you. So good evening, everyone. I hope you had a nice day. And um, I'm glad to see you all here again tonight. Um, yesterday, we talked briefly about, um, well, we started talking about convergence and how God is always looking and going after mankind, right? And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, yesterday about how God created mankind to be in his presence at first, to share in his glory. And we're going to tap into that a little bit today in the, in the sharing of, God, of God's glory. We're going to go into that. But then we also saw how um, mankind managed to pull, uh, pull up a wall of separation between us and God, drawing us as people away from him. And that's the we've, we've been so far. And God is always coming after us. But before we go into that, I want to show you a video. It's in German, but it has uh, English subtitles. So I want to invite you to watch it with me, this video, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. gibt oder ob der Mund völlig fehlt, das spielt für mich keine Rolle. Mir hat neulich mal jemand ein Foto vorgelegt von einem Gesicht. Und der hat zu mir gesagt, erkennst du da was? Dann konnte ich aber nicht erkennen. Und stand wie immer völlig, völlig auf dem Schlauch. Und dann nachher kam raus, das war kein menschliches Gesicht, das war ein Affe, ein Schimpanse. Ich habe das nicht erkennen können, dass es sich um einen Affen handelt. Schule war der absolute Horror für mich. Alle sahen gleich aus. Fand ich. Wenn zum Beispiel große Pause war, dann sind die Klassen alle im Schulhof gewesen. Aber wenn es wieder klingelte, wenn es wieder reinging in die Schule, dann mussten die sich alle sammeln. Also jede Klasse konnte sich mal den einen Tag da versammeln und den anderen Tag da und den anderen Tag da. Das haben die Kinder wohl irgendwie unter sich ausgemacht. Ich habe nie meinen Haufen gefunden. Nie. Nie.
dann habe ich meine Liste angefertigt, um diese Lehrer auseinanderhalten zu können. Kam oben der Name drüber in der ersten Spalte und dann welche Fächer er unterrichtet, äh, ob er nett ist oder viel rumschreit, was zieht er an, hat er einen Bart, hat er eine Brille. Genau, die Schuhe waren ganz wichtig. Und wenn dann ein Lehrer in die Klasse kam, dann habe ich diese Liste aufgemacht und habe dann immer verglichen. Bloß irgendwann hat mal ein Lehrer diese Liste in die Hand gekriegt. Der hat gesehen, was ich da mache, kam auf mich zu, hat mir diese Liste weggenommen. Wurde dann im Grunde genommen von den Lehrern auch gemobbt in der Schule, ja, weil die mich vor der Klasse einfach hingestellt haben und haben gesagt, du hast den Kopf nur, damit du das Stroh nicht in der Hand halten brauchst. Die Kinder haben das natürlich auch übernommen. Und die ganze Schulzeit war eine sehr, sehr schwere Zeit für mich. Ich kann die Gesichter anderer Leute nicht erkennen weil ich sie mir nicht merken kann. Und darüber hinaus kann ich mir auch mein eigenes Gesicht nicht merken. Ich kenne zwar mich, aber ich kenne mein Gesicht nicht. Und irgendwann habe ich mal in einem Buch gelesen, dass man Selbstporträts zeichnen kann, indem man sein Gesicht abtastet. war für mich eine richtige Offenbarung. Weil ein Gesicht ist so eine Hügellandschaft, die ich mit dem Finger abfahre und dann versuche, zweidimensional auf dem Papier nachzuzeichnen, was nicht so ganz einfach ist. Weil ich mich ganz häufig mit den Verdichtungen und damit mit den dunkleren Stellen auch vertue, weil ich einfach nicht sehe, was ich tue. Das macht mich stolz. Und die gehören alle zu mir. Alle. Das ist das Erstaunliche. Also mit den Bildern ist es was anderes, als wenn ich in, in den Spiegel schaue. In den Spiegel, da bin ich mir nie sicher, wie ich das sehe. Aber die sind von meiner Hand gemacht. Da bin ich mir ganz sicher, dass es meine sind. So um, this video, it's the true story of someone who suffers from a cognitive disorder called prosopagnosia. I don't know if you've ever heard about it. It's also called face blindness. People who have it, they can see, okay, it's fine. They can see everything. They have no problem with their vision, but they cannot recognize faces. They cannot memorize them. It sometimes happens to some of us that you meet someone and then you forget about them and then you meet them again and don't remember their face. That's the feeling they have all the time. And actually, studies show that one in every 40 people have this. That is about two to three percent of the world population. It's a lot of people. And uh, this uh, condition is often associated with ADHD or autism. And It might be related with uh, giftedness, with intellectual giftedness. Problem is, there is no treatment. So they have to find a work around the problem. Because can you imagine that you always go up to someone and they don't know they're talking to you and they don't know who you are. So people who have this, they say that stature, so how big you are, how tall you are, hairstyle, clothing style, your voice, gestures, or even noticeable birth birthmarks support the remembering and help tell who you are, who they are talking to. Someone said, on the other hand, it becomes difficult when someone changes their hairstyle or hair color or we meet in an unexpected place. Suddenly, I don't know who I'm talking to anymore. This has already, been, this has already led to some difficulties and because, of course, it is irritating for acquaintances or business partners if every encounter It's like the very first one. Can you imagine that? You talk, you cannot recognize anyone's face, 
It's always like the first time. You have to always ask, who are you? Now, we're going to talk today about something very similar in the Bible. We're going to talk about a faceless God. If you have your Bible there, I want to invite you to open it in Exodus 33. We're going to read a very interesting story. It's maybe one of my favorite stories in the Bible. But before we get there, let me tell you a little bit of what's going on here in this text. So we've been talking this week how God is always searching for mankind. And in his search for mankind, he creates opportunities of convergence. He creates opportunities where he's going to meet people at a certain point, And then something extraordinary happens when he meets us, when he meets mankind. And we've been talking, and we've, we, we saw yesterday how he does that with Adam and Eve. But now, I want to focus your attention to another period in the history of the Bible. Israel is in the desert, and they're camping in the desert before Mount Sinai. And now, imagine, Mount Sinai is this wonderful scene. Right there in the back, you can see the mountain, and it's this moldering, and there are clouds in the top, and there are thunders in the top, because God is present there. And then he tries to talk to the people, and he tries to communicate with them with an audible voice so that they can hear and understand, but what happens? People think, oh no, don't do that, God, we're going to die. We talked about yesterday, right, that since the fall, the attitude of God towards man is rather to run away, to keep a distance. And we see this happening here in the wilderness. God wants to talk to them, but they don't want to hear I mean, they want to hear, but it makes them fear for their lives. And then he says, Moses, you know, you know what? Come up here, and I'm going to talk to you. So Moses goes up there, and he has an encounter with God. This is this convergence point where they two meet, and they talk together. But actually, Moses is there. Imagine he, like he's sitting on a rock or he's standing, I don't know, and he's talking to God and he can actually hear the voice of God out loud, but he cannot see God. So he's talking to a faceless God because actually if you read through the Bible, you're going to see that God always speaks to Moses, but he speaks from outside a cloud. He's involved in a cloud so that he doesn't show himself to Moses. And Moses is there and he's listening, but he's not seeing. And now... Comes, we come to the point where we read the Bible and we're going to see that Moses comes to God and he has a very special, a very special request. So I read from Exodus 33, um, starting on verse 18. Then Moses said to God, Now show me your glory. That's the request from Moses. We're going to get back to this, but Let's keep reading. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, there's a but, he said, you cannot see my face. For no one may see my face and live. The Lord said, there is a place near me here where you may stand on a rock and my glory passes. When my glory passes by, I will put you, I will put you in the cleft in the rock and cover, you with my, and cover it with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. So Moses is up there talking to God and he says, you know what, God, I'm listening to you, but it's kind of weird talking to someone you don't see. Like 10 years ago on telephone, when we still had telephones and used it for like calling people, right? Not FaceTime. And he says, you know what? I want to see your face. I want to see your glory, God. I want to see who you are. It's a very bold request. While God only speaks with the people and they can't handle it, imagine that. He tries only speaking with the people down there and they can't handle that power. They can't handle that voice. Moses is up here and he's not only happy with listening, he wants to see God with his eyes. Moses goes still, Moses goes still a step further in the relationship. I want more. But there's a problem. And that is what God says. Since the fall, 
Humans can no longer see the glory of God. They can no longer see the face of God. And he says in verse 20, you cannot endure it, Moses. You cannot, uh, you cannot stand it. You cannot do it and still live. And that we see the problem that even though Moses loves God, Moses has a sinful heart, even though he's a holy man, and that's pretty interesting. But is that the topic for tonight? He has a sinful heart, and God is holy. It's like fire and water. They cannot coexist. And that's why God has to hide his glory because of men. But he still wants to be there. He still wants to be in the presence of God, in the presence of men. Now, because of mankind's sin, God has to be there, but still with some obstacles. He must hide his glory, and that's how he communicates with mankind since the fall, always through some mediator or something else. We see him talking to Moses before in the story through the burning bush. We, th we see him communicating to the people in the sanctuary, in the most holy, where no one could have access to, unless one time a year in the high priest, you know the whole story. More about that tomorrow. Um, or he speaks them through a cloud. Nobody can see the glory of God. And even when you don't see it with your own eyes, when Isaiah sees the glory of God, he's in a vision and he's not even seeing with his own eyes. And he says, oh my God, I'm going to die because I saw the face of the most holy. So God says to Moses, Moses, I'm sorry. Sorry, dude, I can't do that. This disruption is real. I mean, this wall that sin has put up is real. We talked about it yesterday, and I want you to understand because it's important for the plan of salvation to understand who God is. We first have to understand what sin actually means for us and that God does not take sin lightly. On the other hand, he, loved, he loves so deeply mankind, and that's, what he, that's why he allows Moses up there. And that's the story of the Bible, how God, how God tirelessly, tirelessly tries to reach out to the lost mankind, overcoming the barrier of sin. Now imagine the scene. So Moses is up there. He's talking to God. God, I want to see your face. <laughs> can you? I mean, I can only imagine how happy God must have been because, you know, you're, you're, you're standing there behind the cloud, and now Moses is there like a kid. God, I want to see your face. And then, what? I mean, listen to that. He's talking to the angels. Can you hear him, what he's saying? I mean, up until now, everyone in the story of earth, at least what we have recorded in the Bible, has tried to run away from me, and they cannot stand in my presence. And now you have this one exemplar of a human who actually wants to see me. Isn't that wonderful? That's what I imagine God's reaction was. But then he says, and I told you, this is a favorite one of my favorite stories in the Bible because it's so weird. And God says, Moses, look, there's this rock here, and I'm going to put you behind it. Okay? So you stay, you're going to stay behind this rock, and there's a crack on the rock. You can imagine that. So you're going to stay there, and you're going to look through the crack. And that's what I'm going to do, Moses. I'm going to walk past in front of this rock, and I'm going to I'm going to hide this crack. I'm going to hide your view with my hand. And I'm going to walk past it. And when I've, I'm almost done walking, I'm going to withdraw my hand. You're going to see my back. I told you, it's weird. And that's what happens. <laughs> God walks past the rock. I mean, the tech doesn't say so, but we assume that's what happened. And Moses sees the back of God. Something wonderful happens here. The fact that Moses wants to see, wishes to see God's face and God is willing to go, like to, yeah, it's a partial fulfillment. He compromises and he said, my face you cannot see, but maybe, maybe just a glimpse of my glory, of my holiness, maybe a glimpse of my back, that's, that's enough. Can you imagine the sensation of Moses looking behind, uh, through that crack as he sees this supernatural being shining, passing through, and he sees like only a fraction of a second, but he knows God is there. It is wonderful what happens here. Now, as we talked yesterday, man was created to be in this presence of God and to have unimpeded access to this glory. When we read, for example, in Genesis 1, 27, 
It's a very known verse there. It's said that so God created mankind in his own image. And the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So the Bible says we were created after God's image. We should reflect his image. We should reflect, reflect his glory. Now, once, when I was here in Friedenzell, I moved to a new apartment. I used to live here in Con and Kob, and then I moved to Con with my wife. There's an apartment there. And then as we were preparing to go to bed first night, lights were off, I realized there was something shining on the ceiling. As it was first night in the apartment, I said, what in the world is that? And then we got closer, I got closer, and I saw, and I don't know if you know it, it's this like stickers in forms of stars that you can just stick on the wall or on the ceiling so when the lights go off, you have like a starry night under, uh, above you. And maybe the person who lived there before me had put them there, and they left it there. But I don't know how, I mean, I, <laughs> I understand nothing of this, of, ke of, of chemistry and physics and everything, but I know that these things work in such a manner that they have to be exposed to light, so you have to turn the lights on, and then they will absorb the energy, and when you turn the light off, it will ref kind of, it's not reflect, but they will shine with the light, with the energy they absorbed. This is exactly how God created man. We were created to be in the presence of God, and by being in His presence, we also share in His glory, and we are able to reflect the radiance of God's glory. So that's why the Bible says that and first, in the beginning, they, were, they didn't have any clothes because the only thing they had was God's actual glory surrounding their bodies. But now let's proceed with the story. I'm reading now from chapter 34 of Exodus, verses 29. Moses is there. He sees the back of God. And now he comes down the mountain. So he encounters with God up there. And now he comes down. And there's a group of elders waiting for him there. And he goes to talk to them. And something weird happens again. Verse 29 says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. And verse 33, we read, when Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil on his face. Can you imagine now Moses coming down with the tablets on his hands, and he is going to meet the people, and he's very happy because he just spoke to God. And now the elders are waiting for him, and then they see Moses coming down, and hey, he gets there, and says, yo, oh, what's up, guys? And they look at Moses, ah, Moses, what's going on with you? What, wait, wait, I don't know. We can't look at your face. It's shining. And then he has to put a veil. And every time he goes up to talk to God, he has to put a veil to cover the radiance of his face. Maybe he is the first human since the fall in the history of the Bible that fulfilled his purpose as creation to irradiate God's glory, to share in God's glory. And he didn't even realize. That, that's what I found most funny. Because he gets down there and his faith is shining. He's not aware of it. He doesn't even know. Now, what can we learn from this weird but very interesting story? First lesson I can think of is that true communion with God is evident. You cannot hide it. That is, just like Moses, when you spend time in the presence of God, that changes us. When we have access to the presence of God, when we spend time in prayer and in Bible reading, not only in church, but I mean at home, really spending time with God, and He shows Himself to us, that changes us, and people around us, they realize it. They know something is different. They know something is, I was going to say wrong, but it's not wrong. It's something is right with this person. And I'm not talking only about sermons in the church. I'm talking about daily life, our daily encounters with real people, be it at work, be it at school, be it whatever, wherever we go, people will realize something different, something shining there. 
in our social interactions, or when we are minding our own business. We are called by Jesus to be light in this world. The only thing we have to realize is that this light is not our own. We have to, be, to have been first exposed to the, searcher, to, the, to the source of light so that we can absorb it and reflect it into the, word. We don't, in the world. We don't have it of our own. We must be exposed to light. And we today, just like Moses, we also go out in the mountain, but this time not in the mountain really, we go to the church to hear God's word, right? And then we hear God's word just like Moses hears it from the cloud. We also hear his word through the sermons, through the songs, and whatever goes on in the church. We also hear God speaking. But let me ask you a question. What happens when sermon is over? We go back home and everything is back to normal? And let me ask you another question. Are you really okay with this long-distance relationship? I mean, I go to church, I hear the sermon, just like Moses go up, goes up the mountain, he hears God, and then he comes down, everything is fine, nothing has changed. Am I really fine with feeling the presence of God through a third-party supplier? You know that risk, what that is, right? I know God through the church. I mean, church is good. I'm not saying church is bad. But I know God of whom Pastor Paulo there speaks. I know God who, about whom Dittmar pre speaks when he preaches. Or anyone. I know they are God, but is he my God as well? Am I happy? Or, yeah, is it enough for me that God remains concealed in the cloud as long as he is there? I mean, this is church, this is a spiritual everything, but this here, this is my world, this is my life. As long as God stays here, concealed in the cloud, and he's talking and I'm listening and it is okay, it's like, yeah, it's fine, you know? I know God through the church, I know God through the pastor, I know God through whoever it is, and that's enough. I don't need more. So let me ask you, do we also experience... A faceless God? Someone who we don't really know? My desire, my wish for us tonight is that we could wish for more. Not only a sermon on a weaker prayer. No. We want this real thing with God. We want this real relationship where I get to know him personally, where he's my God, not the God of the pastor, not the God of the preacher, not the God of the sermon. He's my God because I have a personal relationship with him that goes beyond the cloud, that goes beyond the mountain, that goes beyond the sermon, the wicker prayer, that goes beyond the walls of the chapel. It keeps going outside. And that's where I really know him. I, I want to have this personal, inalienable relationship with God. You know what inalienable means, right? It means you cannot transfer it to anyone. It's your own and yours alone. And I want to have this relationship with Him, not rely on third parties. It's my and my own. He's my God. So I have a special invitation for you. Just like Moses, I want to invite you tonight to climb the mountain of communion and meet our God up there. And how do we do that, you may ask? Oh, we have the instruments. Just like people who go up mountains, they also have all their gear. We do that through prayer. It's all the things you already know. We do that through worship and church. When we're singing and praising God, we through this through Bible study or reading the testimonies. That's how we meet God. That's how we get this personal relationship. And what you're going to meet there, what you're going to see there, you're going to have this personal, intimate, close relation with God when you get to know Him, not only through a sermon, not only through a song, but you yourself. Even though our spiritual senses have been blinded by our sinfulness, I want to invite you, just like in the story at first, I want to invite you through the fingers of faith, of faith to feel the faith, the face of our God. You know how Carla, I mean, I think her name is Charlotte, 
to say that blind people do that. I mean, I can't know my own face, so I have to touch it, and I can feel it, and then I, may, I ha can have an idea, and she even make, makes portraits of it. So I, want, I wish the same for us tonight, and I want to invite you to do that through the fingers of our faith, to touch the face of God and get to know Him and get into a personal relationship with Him. He's waiting patiently. He wants it. He desires it with the, his whole heart. But now it's our time. Now it's our chance to enter that calling. Amen. Okay, let's stand up for this song and I'll praise our great God. And please put your mask over your mouth. of prayer now and just like yesterday a little bit different I want to give you the chance tonight 
If you want, you can turn up to the side and pray with the person next to you, or you can pray alone. It's up to you. But I want you to think about what we just talked, and maybe you can tell God, God, I've heard your voice. I know you're calling me, and I want to know you personally beyond this beyond this sermon. I want to get to know you by who you are and have a very intimate relationship with you. Now is your time to talk to this God and tell Him what you feel and that you want to know Him better. Let's pray, and then I'll close with a prayer from up front. Father, I want to thank you so much, Father, for everything you've done for us. You live up there in heaven and all the glory and all the praise you get all the time from angels and from unfallen creatures. While we are here on this planet that's dark, that is rotten by sin and Sometimes we think we are alone, but it is in such moments that we realize, Father, even though you're there, you're still here and you're right next to us and you long for this relationship with us. You no long for us to get to know you. It's just that sometimes we don't realize. Sometimes we prefer to keep a distance, but Father, I want to ask you today that you may show your glory to us. I want to ask you, Father, that, you may, that we may be able to see your face and experience God in our own lives, not only through sermons in church, but that we experience it every day, that you know, that we know, that we are aware that you walk with us, even though we may go through the valley of shadow and death, you are there, you're walking with us, and you are at our very side. Thank you, Lord, because you have not left us alone. Thank you, Lord, because you are our God who is always present. And we ask you, shed the light of the gospel. Shed the light of salvation into our hearts now through the work of the Holy Spirit. And allow us to feel you through faith. In the name of Jesus, I pray, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Um, can, you, can you hear me? Perfect. So last evening we have told you uh, that we have spread eight sheets of paper on the campus. So one is here and there are seven others who were hidden around the campus. And so I want to ask you, who has found five sheets of paper? Please raise your hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then you might keep searching for those sheets of paper. They are hanging around on the campus. And they are forming a sentence. And yeah. <laughs> okay. So today you have received another pearl for your string. It's yellow. And um, it, it has a meaning too. So yellow stands for the goodness of God. Yesterday, you have received a black pearl. The black pearl stands for sin. God is calling us out of our sins into the light because God is good and because he loves us. 
So tomorrow you will get another pearl and you will get one pearl from Monday to Friday each evening. And on Friday you will have a bracelet with five pearls and they are representing the gospel. And for today we have a challenge for you. Um, the same was about us meeting with God and we want to ask you to set a timer for tomorrow that you don't forget to take your time for meeting with God and you can put the timer on 1 p.m. and then we can all have five minutes time with God. Yeah, so don't forget to have your time with God and set a timer that you don't forget it. Yeah. And now we're going to hear another song or sing to another song, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for answering this time. 
Do you think this sermon was really good? Say yes, amen. Yes, amen. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, so what I want to give to you is let's be sticky, glowy, fluorescent stars on someone else's ceiling. Let's radiate. Let's touch God's face. Let's also eat because now the program ends and everyone is hungry. Who's hungry? Who's hu no, really, like who's hungry? Okay, I'm going to tell you what we have and then you all raise your arms. I, I know you, I know you. So there is going to be waffles. You smelled it, you smell it. It's waffled, so who, who wants to eat a waffle? Raise your hand. Yeah, see, that's a few more hands I see now. So <laughs> in order to get your waffle, you need to be sitting at your seat. Because the One You For Jesus team, the beautiful One You For Jesus team, we can ha give a hand of applause for the One You For Jesus team. Thank you. <laughs> they are handing out the waffles to you on your seat so we don't have a poke of people gathering all the waffles. Okay, so I would be one of those people gathering all the waffles. So in order that that, that not happens, we have the One You For Jesus team bringing the waffles to you. Also, remember to use the hashtag FAU praise for week of prayer if you post anything. <laughs> and remember to be here tomorrow at 7.30 here in the chapel or at 7.15 7 7 on the internet, right? 7. 7. <laughs> there will be a link <laughs> shared on all social media, Instagram. Um, so... Let's have a good night. Let's eat some waffles and be blessed. Thank you.